All right, I'm going to do this uh, as a video response to uh, another little thing that somebody else did about what about Haiti. And uh, they brought up some very interesting points, and I'd like to do so as well. Um, my issue is, is that we're giving all of this money and whatnot away to a place that really basically... Um, it's not like, I mean, you know, there are people that are sitting up there and they're going, oh, well, let's give some money back to these Haiti, these Haitians and whatnot so that, you know, that they could get back to, you know, going back to school and doing things like, you know, they have a regular life like Americans have, and that's not the, that's not the truth. Um, they ain't got no McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chickens and drive through carryouts and, 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 and Marriott's and, and, and Hilton's and, motel sixes they ain't got car dealerships they ain't got uh factories and jobs and farms that are feeding people they basically have to get their own food imported before katrina the price in their money for just a tin can halfway filled with beans to eat was eight dollars in their money the average pay that these people were finding on Haiti, excuse me, uh, was about a dollar a day. So that means they had to work eight days for one meal. Um, let's keep it real here. Uh, no matter who you can't, who you think you need to give your money to, basically speaking, it's not really going to cause much of a progress right this second unless there's a massive proportions of people that are going over there to save the country and not Port-au-Prince. Now, a lot of people would wonder, why does it look so bad in Port-au-Prince? Well, there's a lot of people in Port-au-Prince that have no skills, no need, and no desire to actually try to grow something in a field, farm, or anything else. People are living over top of people. It really is kind of bad down there. No, ain't no kind of in it. You know, now we got all these people, yeah, I gave money, I gave money to Wyclef. Now, Wyclef could do anything he want with it, and I can sleep good knowing that I gave my money to a Haitian. And I know that that boy, even though he's afraid of the ghettos himself right now, he at least has been the only person outside of CNN that's ever found the ghettos of Haiti and has ever been able to safely go in and at least be able to be respected. Now, that's up to him and his conscience how he does that. And I hope he gets a conscience when he gets all of that money and find, and they let him loose and he can go out. They play around with Porto Prince. He can go on back over the hood and maybe they can start buying bricks. Maybe they can start learning something. Maybe he can find a way to go out there and put these people to work. Why don't they make something? Make some doggone shirts or something. People in doggone Dominican Republic are, are, are in slave camps, but they're working. They're making little bits of money. You don't hear much from them. But there are no big banks and no big restaurants and no big uh, 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 anything in Haiti. They can't even eat off of their own soil. The only thing going on in Haiti, there's big businesses, is orphans. And most of those orphans, they're not orphans. They're just kids that somebody else got a hookup on. It's been more profitable for a lot of those people to spit out healthy enough babies for somebody to say, hey, we got orders for 15, 20, 20 babies all going to the U.S. And people are sitting around there going, why don't they do it? Why do, there's plenty of children in the United States that they can adopt. No, they can't. That's the reason why they're buying them through these little church organizations who are basically sitting around there, basically just breeding healthy little, uh, um, I don't want to be disrespectful. But, with all the paperwork that you have to go through, the amount of time that you have to go through it, just to be able to get an American baby, most of these people are going out there and they're buying all of these doggone third world kids and looking at, and out here in the suburbs with a Benetton commercial. These kids look like we are the world. None of them look like nothing else. And you know what? They're just as happy and they're probably going to love those kids until those kids grow up and find out that just because their skin is the same color as yours, they don't relate to you. 
It ain't like everybody else is doing it. There are hundreds and hundreds of people who are living well off in this country, rather illegally or illegally, who all came from Haiti. Do you see them sitting back there? Does Wyclef have a mansion in Haiti? Hell, it would come cheap. Come on, people. You know, this is real talk here. You know, everybody wants to sit around here. Now that they find out that all of a sudden everybody's heartstrings have found extra dollars to do that, to give away to, oh, they're going to tear on your heartstrings as much as they can until they squeeze out as much as they can until you start getting these phone bills and you start finding out that, oh, crap, how did this phone bill turn out to be $200 when it's normally 80 bucks? Well, guess what, people? A lot of those people in Haiti ain't going to get that. Why I didn't give my money to the Red Cross? Because the Red Cross will take your money but they also will go down there and things that they need, they will buy. Now, who will they buy them from? I don't know about you, but I don't know a lot of people that got contracts with the Red Cross that are minorities. I don't know people that are really honestly sitting back around there checking to make sure that they're getting the best deal for your buck. And in the meantime, Haitians die. But guess what? Haitians were dying before Katrina. Just like Africans, just like Asians, just like Spaniards, just like Americans. We're biodegradable people. But if you want to sit back and play on your heartstrings and try to act like you're actually doing something for somebody, the only way that's going to happen is if you get there and then you stay there and you make it happen. And then you got to teach these people some kind of social order because the church sure ain't did it. That's why they ran them in France out of there with voodoo. And people can't even understand that. These people have no spiritual mindset enough to really honestly know what the hell you're talking about when you go down there trying to say, oh, you poor people, let me help you. They sitting around there going, damn, um, let me get some more of that water and that rice. Man, I can clean up. I can sell this shit. Come on, people. You don't know what's really going on outside of your own doors, outside of your own borders. But trust and believe. It's not going to be in the next couple of months, all of a sudden you're going to look around and Port-au-Prince looks like Vegas. You can forget that. This is real talk. And right now, there's a whole lot of people suffering all over the doggone world, and you just happen to find some more of them to do that, and you don't seem to understand. Half of these people are down in doggone Haiti making sure they're checking on their investments. You saw that in CNN and a couple other news things. What did they do? They ran from Port-au-Prince, went back up in the hills where it's safe to check on those little orphans in those little church orphanages that had to check up on their stock. Now they got a lot of people that are sitting back, ooh, great, the city of Pittsburgh just got 20. At the same time, you got kids starving right here in America. But guess what? We're better off starving here than trying to pay $8 for a half a can of beans. And so why you want to throw your money out there, why you want to have your heartstrings and feel so bad about everything, understand, we're biodegradable people. And if their people ain't helping them, then how the hell you think you're going to do something better? We love your money. That's their slogan.